All right, welcome back. Managed to get out and do a little work today, or in the progress anyways. Um, so, aileron servos are in, nothing crazy there. I kind of showed all that already. Uh, I got both of them done, so I kind of moved on to the next biggest pain thing um, in this jet, minus, I think, the rudders. So, started on the leading edge slats, and last time I used a 500 ounce servo. I don't think I need that, and for some reason I had already changed out the brackets, so I don't know if I changed those last time. Because uh, I had a video of it working last time and I had 170, 172s on that and it's a uh, 500 plus ounce servo. I think these 175s are 300 ounce. I'll have to check that. But I got, I had the brackets on the 175s uh, from, and I'm using all the servos from the last jet. So I don't know if I switched these out for some reason or what, but I'm going to try the 175s. Um, we'll see how it goes once I get them hooked up Because um, I actually had the arms and everything on them already, so I know that I was intending to use these for some reason I don't know so um, but the first thing you got to do and This I don't know if there's a you think they would just Could do this when they lay them up, but I, I guess there's not a way to do it um, So bear with me here. So this has a you can kind of see it here Ooh, no, I don't. I took them off. So there's a bell crank that starts here, that hooks up to the servo, comes down, has an L, continues on down to this end, has an L. And they just use uh, regular, you know, Sullivan type clevises, and that's where the BBM clevis tool actually comes into play. Because what you have to do is you have to bend this guy back. And it's kind of hard to do because I've already got these on and attached, but you can see it. Yeah, it's hard to see, but there is a, there are two carbon uh, horns glued into the leading edge. And then those things run over to that mechanism to talk about. So you, and they don't come attached. So you have to, to get to attach them. And then if you want to do it correctly, trying to get these little, um, Nobody probably ever uses them. Most people just put like some kind of, um, you know, like fuel tubing around it. But these little metal clips that kind of clip on the other side of the clevis, you know, I don't know everybody's seen them. Nobody probably uses them. Half the time they come off and or they lose them just like that. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, but you can kind of see it there. But if you do it right, and they did actually the flap right or the slat right you can actually bend it. Uh, so that was actually nice. These were actually done right. The little channel in here, the gap cover actually is straight and larger. So I can actually get more leading edge flap. You don't need much, but before you would go like here and then if you went any further, you would get a big gap. So that at least they extended these a little bit more so I can actually get a little bit but more leading edge. But I don't want to get too much because for some reason, I don't know how, but you end up with like scratches on the wingtip here. These wings kind of have a canner, a, a camber to them. And even when, I swear I never saw the wings touch, but both of my last one had scrapes on those tips. And I'm like, I never saw the jet actually do that. So I don't know if it's when it comes down and it touches the nose because the nose sits kind of low. If it does it then, I don't know, but I was I would fix it it would happen again and I would never see you know any kind of you know but at least this is my story I'm digging to it but anyway so uh, kind of a, a some some advice I suggest adjusting this one out a little bit like the clevis out and connecting it to the outside first because it's almost impossible if you connect this inside one to do to come back and connect this one because it, it limits you on travel and the gap here is is a lot less than down here so do the outside one first then do the inside that's the recommendation uh, and then after that it's just a traditional you know kind of uh, install L brackets on the servo last time I had the, the servo actually flipped but 
their rods, I guess, are shorter now. So this is the rod you get. They got these metal lollipops um, in there, and they just screw them all the way down. I'm actually taking them back out um, and putting, lengthening them by, you know, unscrewing the, the lollipop at the end and then putting a, a lock nut on there. So they just screw them down where they're both locked on the end of the shaft and they don't always work that way. Because they're not the tightest fit on these lollipops, so I would guess over time you would probably strip just because of the, the weight. And these things aren't all that hard. These aren't like titanium turnbuckles or anything. So anyways, it goes in, connects to the lollipop like this with another lollipop connecting to the servo. And then it's like this. So... Uh, be careful drilling just like the ailerons <clears throat> when you're drilling the, the, the screws to attach the, the servo to the wood. If you're not careful, you'll drill all the way through and through the top of the hole or the wing. Did that on my last one, didn't do it on this one. So maybe if you got a little drill stop or maybe just put a mark on your drill bit. I use this, 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 uh, this hand finger drill on everything so I always just kind of um, mark it. Uh, and then they kind of give you, ooh, I just noticed something. Um, they give you these screws to attach it to this piece of flat ply. It's pretty good ply. It's not that soft stuff, so it's actually aircock ply. Um, so um, that works good. So they give you some brackets, the four screws, and they give you these uh, 3M, 3M, um, screws for the actual lollipops. I'm using my own because uh, the way I set it up you have to put a spacer in there that way when when you go full like pulls and the lollipops right here it doesn't hit the edge of the, the servo so I actually put a spacer to bring it out a little bit so like full um, this way is going to be down and then full up actually full up is this and then that way it's kind of like it's relieves the pressure on the servo and then as you pull them down it pulls this back and I get you get to about right there before you're out of throw so it doesn't use but a quarter of the piece a quarter of the you know like 90 degrees is really all you're going to use so that is what I'm doing um, and then I'll move on to the flaps, but you can kind of see there. I did have to come back and clean some of this out right here. But yeah, oh yeah, and they give you these the screws to it. That's what these little guys are. Sorry, these are the ones that you screw into the brackets to hold the servo on. Um, but I didn't use them. You'll need some washers because they don't give any washers. Any washers on the back side of the servo arm, uh, the back side of the servo mount, uh, or the screws will go through. So they didn't supply that. So, but that's it for this one. I'm gonna get this one finished. Go ahead and get this one installed, and then I'll kind of jump back once I'm doing the flaps because those are um, kind of a pain to get in because uh, you usually have to cut out some for the mount. So that takes a little bit, but you guys have a good one and I'll be back later. Cheers.